So on day one, the notes were measuring segments. In today's notes, we're going to be measuring angles. At the top of the page, it says that the measure of an angle is usually given in degrees. Since there are blank in a circle, well, since we just talked about degree measurement, we know that there are 360 degrees in a circle. And one degree would be one out of the 360, or that fraction of the circle. When you use a protractor to measure angles, you are applying the following postulate. Before we look at the postulate, I just want to highlight over here, this angle 1 is also named SRT, or angle TRS with R being the vertex. And we have the interior of the angle and the exterior of the angle. So down below within the box for the protractor postulate, it says consider line OB and a point A on one side of that line. The rays of OA can be matched one to one with real numbers zero to 180. The measure of angle AOB is equal to the absolute value of the difference of the numbers for OA, or for ray, the numbers for ray OA and OB. So here we have line OB, okay, but we're not going to look at the line. We're going to look at one of the opposite rays that forms that line, so OB, and then we're going to look at ray OA which those two rays are not opposite because they don't form a straight line. So if we look at that angle and we find, want to find the measure of angle A, O, B. So this angle right here. I'm going to explain the protractor postulate, but we're not going to be using the protractor that much, if at all, during the classroom. I just wanted to go over this to show it in respect to the ruler postulate. Um, so the measure of angle B, it depends on how you look at it. So if you look at the protractor, you have two sets of numbers. So I'll grab the pink. The outside goes from 0 to the left to 180. And the inside numbers go from 0 to 180 in the other direction. I like to choose uh, the numbers where the ray lays flat at 0. So it lays flat at zero right here. So this would be your zero degrees, and it goes all the way over right here using the inside to 140 degrees. So the measure of angle AOB is the absolute value of that difference. So you can do 140 minus zero or zero minus 140. And that's why we have the absolute value, because the absolute value of negative 140 is 140 degrees. The different types of angles, so you're responsible for classifying um, angles and knowing their name in respect to their measurement. So this first measurement here, all the way to the left, the first angle, is an angle where A is between 0 and 90 degrees. I'm going to give the measurements for each. So the A here, because of the box, is equal to 90 degrees. Here, this angle is greater than 90, but less than 180. And last, this angle is exactly 180 degrees. So going back to the left, an angle whose measure is between 0 and 90 degrees is called an acute angle. An angle that is exactly 90 degrees is a right angle. Greater than 90 but less than 180 is obtuse. And last, an angle that is exactly 180 degrees is a straight angle. Now angle addition is the same 
a segment in addition in that it's the sum of the parts equals the whole. But we're not dealing with segments, we're dealing with angles. So to start it says if D is in the interior, as you can see it's in the interior of angle ABC, then the measure of angle ABC, that's the whole. This whole equals the measure of ABD, so if we trace ABD, the ray through it, plus the measure of angle CBD, tracing CBD. So the pink plus the green is equal to the orange. So let's draw a picture in number one of the angle that's given. It says T is in the interior of PQR, so always draw the whole first. Same with a segment. So here would be P, Q is in the middle, that's the vertex. Here's P, Q, R. So let's find the measure of P, Q, R. If the measure of P, Q, R is 10x minus 7, so this angle from here to here is 10x minus 7 degrees. If R, Q, T, oh, I forgot to put T in the interior. So let's say T is right here. So if um, RQT is 5x, so RQT, so from here to here is 5x, and then PQT, PQT, so from here to here is 4x plus 6. So once again, the sum of the parts, the parts being this orange angle and green angle, so the sum of those two, which would be 4x plus 6 plus 5x equals the whole 10x minus 7. So let's solve for x, and then we can go back and find the measure of PQR. So I'm going to subtract the 6 first, and I'll show you why. As I subtract the 6, I can combine that 4x and 5x, which are like terms. So 9x equals 10x minus 13. Subtract the 10x, 9 minus 10 is a negative 1x. Divide by negative 1, and x is 13. So substituting back into the algebraic expression that represents PQR, which is right here, we have 10 times 13, which is 130, minus 7 is 123 degrees. On the back, angles that have the same measure are congruent. So let's put a number 1 in here and a number Two. To note congruency with angles, you just put the marks indicating. So I did two, and I always seem to do two and not one. You could do one line on each. But once again, what is equal are the angle measures. And the angles themselves are congruent. So the measures, just like the measure of the segments, which was the length, Length are equal, and segments are congruent. Angle measures, so we could say the measure of angle 1 equals the measure of angle 2. And then angle 1 is congruent to angle 2. The angle bisector. So last class we talked about a segment bisector, and a segment bisector intersects a segment at its midpoint. And the midpoint divides a segment into two congruent segments. An angle bisector is a ray that divides an angle into two angles that are congruent. So in the diagram to the right, ray VW, this ray right here, bisects angle XVU. So that means, I'm going to put numbers in there so I don't have to write the angles in terms of the three letters, that angle 1 would be congruent 
to angle 2. And their measures are equal. So number 2 says that RQ bisects PRS. Find the measure of PRS. So knowing that this is a bisector, I know that this angle is congruent to that angle and their measures are equal. So the measure of PRQ is equal to the measure of SRQ. So x plus 40 equals 3x minus 20. So solving 3x minus x is 2x, 40 plus 20 is 60, divide by 2 and x is 30. Find the measure of angle PRS. So PRS, we need to substitute. So 30 plus 40 would be 70. And 3 times 30 is 90. And 90 minus 20 is 70. Well, it's good that they both came out to be the same measure. So let's consider it a check. And that checked out to be true. But the whole angle would be 70 plus 70, which is 140 degrees. Our angle pairs. Not much to fill in here, so we'll bring up the first two that go together. Complementary versus supplementary. Complementary angles, the sum of the two angles is 90 degrees. So that would be angle one here, angle two, and angle one, angle two. Adjacent versus non-adjacent means they share a common side. So these two angles share that side right there. They're right next to each other and um, again they intersect at that side so therefore they are adjacent. Where not adjacent means they don't share a common uh, side or ray. Supplementary means the sum of the two angles adds up to 180 degrees. So adjacent would be these two, angle one and angle two because they share that side. And these two angles are not adjacent as they don't share a side. Last a linear pair and vertical angles. So a linear pair are angles pair, meaning two, that are along a straight line. So I'm going to draw another ray here. So angle one and angle two are a linear pair. Okay, it looks similar to this picture here. We know that a straight angle is 180 degrees and that looks like a protractor. Okay, so since a straight angle is 180 degrees, measure of angle one plus the measure of angle two is 180 degrees. The non-common rays, so that'd be this ray and this ray, are opposite rays. And then vertical angles. Vertical angles are formed by the intersection of two lines. So let's first draw two lines that intersect. <coughs> In my notes, I say that 3 and 6 are vertical and 4 and 5. So if 3 and 6 are vertical, those would be these two angles. Okay, they're directly opposite each other in that intersection. And then um, 4 and 5 would be here. So this angle is congruent to that angle and then this angle is congruent to that angle. Vertical angles are congruent. Alright, we're going to just finish up with four examples. Number three, find the complement of E and the supplement of F. So complementary of this angle that's algebraic. Let's save that. Um, whoops. Go moving forward. There we go. Let's do the supplement of F first, as that is given numerically. So if angle F is 116.5, what is this more or less? So we take 180, subtract. 116.5 and we get 63.5. So that's the supplement of F.
Now the complement, we do it the same way. Okay, but complement, instead of doing 180 minus, we're going to do 90 minus, and then the angle, which is given algebraically, so 7x minus 12. Distributing, we have 90 minus 7x, and then when you negate the tw negative 12, it becomes positive 12. So 90 plus 112 is um, 102 minus 7x. Okay, and if you notice, if you take this algebraic expression, 7x minus 12 plus 102 minus 7x, these cancel out because they're additive inverses, and negative 12 plus 102 is 90, so it checks. So to answer, the complement of angle E is 102 minus 7x degrees, that was algebraic, and the supplement of angle F is 63.5 degrees. Oops, and that 5 One more time undo, 63.5 degrees. I'm getting better at writing on this board. All right, number four, find the values of x and y. Well, we know right now that the vertical angles here and here are congruent, but that's an equation with two different variables in it, which we use or we solve using a system. So let's not look at that angle pair, but look at the angle pair along this line. So any number of angles along a straight line add up to 180. So let's start there with 8x plus 26 plus 3x equals 180. Again, I'm going to subtract the 26 so I can combine as I um, bring those terms down. So 11x equals 154 divided by 11 and x is 14. So we have x and now we need y. Well knowing the vertical angle pair as we mentioned these two angles well blue I'm on pen looking at the intersection of the two lines we know that this angle is equal to that angle. So 5y plus 38 equals let's just plug in x so this would be 8 times 14 plus 26, which is 138. So now subtract 38. We have 5y equals 100. Divide by 5, and y is 20. So look to avoid the system if possible. It will probably make it easier. Number 5. It says the measure of two complementary angles. Well, as soon as I see that, I know that something plus something is 90. So if they're in the ratio 2 to 7, an equivalent ratio would be like if you double them, 4 to 14, triple them, 6 to 21. And the two numbers in that ratio have to add up to 90, and those do not. So you can keep going and guessing and checking, but this was just simply, this one was 2 times 2, 7 times 2, and then this one was 2 times 3, 3 being the factor, and 7 times 3. So the way you can set it up is 2x and um, 7x, so you can find that factor. So then you add... 9x equals 90, divide by 9, and x is 10. Find the measure of the larger angle, so that would be 7 times 10, which is 70 degrees. Okay, last one. The degree measure of the larger of two supplementary angles, so once again, I would do line plus line equals 180. We don't actually need the degree symbol. 
The degree measure of the larger of the two exceeds three times the measure of the smaller. So since we don't know the smaller, we're going to let x equal the smaller angle. Now if we translate, the larger exceeds three times the measure of the smaller. So three times the measure of smaller. It exceeds that it goes beyond, so it's 40 units larger. Okay, so it's going to be x, or I'll put this one first, my line looks longer. 3x plus 40 plus x equals 180. Subtract the 40, we get 4x equals 140. Divide by 4, and x is 35. We need to find the measure of each angle. So one of them is just x. So the angle measures are 35 degrees and so I need to plug it in 3 times 35 plus 40 okay 3 times 35 well 3 times 30 is 90 plus 3 times 5 15 that'll give us 105 plus 40 which would be 145 degrees and that is it for today